One of the vacancies on the New Jersey Supreme Court is the result of the recent retirement of Virginia Long, who spent 13 years on the High Court. And she joins us now from the State House. Justice Long, it's good of you to join us. Uh, the confirmation process, as you look back on your own confirmation process, was it a grueling day for you? Well, yeah, it was, as a matter of fact. Now, the original one was not. It was kind of a love fest, if you want to know the truth. But the renomination process was much more complex because by that point, I had been deciding cases for seven years, and various members of the committee had the opportunity to read those cases and to make comments as to their position as regarding a, them. As a judge, did you feel that politics in its rawest and purest form was interfering with what you'd like to see as the judge's right and prerogative to, to hear cases and to rule uh, from the law no. and not from politics? No, not at all. You know, the, the independence of the judiciary from politics is probably the most important thing that you can say about it. Every person, poor, rich, black, white, native-born, foreign-born, is the same before the court. The court calls them as they see them. Nobody gets special treatment because of political connection or money, what have you. This is the last opportunity for an ordinary citizen um, to advance his case for justice and against tyranny. When you see Mr. Kwan go through uh, what he was going through uh, today, uh, where his, the family's business was being brought uh, front and center, and I believe Senator Carrillo's came out and said it sounded like we were trying to investigate the, uh, the nominee's mother and not his own qualifications mm -hmm. for office. How do you feel about that? Well, I didn't see it, and so I really am not in a position to comment on it. Does it seem appropriate to you that uh, the committee would take a look at a candidate's family's business? Well, I think that it's appropriate for the, ca for the uh, committee to look at everything. And but that goes all the way back. This is, this is the Supreme Court. Again, this is the last chance that our fellow citizens have for vindication of their rights. And I, I don't have any problem with the committee looking into every aspect of a nominee. How would you characterize the state of the New Jersey Supreme Court right now? Excellent. It's in excellent hands. And these nominees, have you, have you rendered your own verdict as to their qualifications for office and their likelihood to perform well in those positions? I have not, nor would I. This is the, the actual operation of government at its best. We have the governor nominating. We have advice and consent by the Senate for a position on the Supreme Court. And when that works properly, you get great nominees. And we have great people on the court now. What was your proudest moment on the court? You know, that's like asking um, a mother which is her favorite child. Every moment that I spent on the court, I was proud of. Every opinion that I wrote, I did to my very, I did the very best that I could, and that's uh, the same for all of the other members of the court. And I think that there isn't anything that I wasn't proud of on the court. But there is one thing you, you were quoted as not being happy about, and that is having to depart at a specific age point. Unlike your, your federal counterparts, there is a mandatory retirement age. Yes, and I would have died with my proverbial judge boots on. Unfortunately, that was not to be. I really don't think that um, seven, an age 70 retirement makes much sense anymore, but that I leave that to the, um, the governor and the legislature to determine whether or not we ought to have a, um, a constitutional amendment. Uh, taking, taking your own personal case out of the equation, if you choose to, do you think that the court suffers because of experienced jurists such as yourself being, so to speak, shown the door? I do actually think that is so. I mean, on the one hand, there is a fear, I guess, that people will outstay their welcomes, and that's always a possibility. But when you have a deep somebody, and I'll take myself out of that equation, has a deep reservoir of experience, um, just losing that for no reason other than the application of an arbitrary birthday doesn't seem the way that things should be operating. Does that open the door to the court being politicized, that the nominees can, that the turnover rate allows people in elected position to try to craft the court in their own image? Well, you know, 
You can try to craft the court in your own image, but the fact of the matter is there are lots of, of principles operating against that. One of the main principles is the doctrine of stare decisis. What that means is we stick with the decisions that we have made so that when a new person comes on the court, the court doesn't just say, okay, we're going to take this case again, and now that the vote will be 4-3 the other way, we'll change our opinion. We don't do that. We stand with what we have done unless something important has happened in the world which would change that opinion. Otherwise, there would be no uniformity or predictability in the law. And the truth is that each justice finds his place or her place on the court and um, decides cases based on their merits. And um, that's, I think, the way that it's going to continue to be. Justice Long, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me.